Right, so I've got it propped up a bit, so hopefully I can get to these a bit easier now. Um, so what else I wondered? Uh, that style ground point there, which is pin ID five, and it comes into that common there. So 85, 70 and 68. So this is one of the regulator circuits I was a bit suspicious of because I had to replace that, uh, uh, which one was it, Q11? Yeah, Q11 is one of the parts I had to replace. So there could be an issue with this circuitry here. But um, it's a pretty simple circuit. So it shouldn't be too bad to figure out. So let's measure those and see what we get. So uh, there's 85 there, and you want 70, which is going to be directly opposite that one, so it's going to be 70 there. I've got 4 volts, and I've got 68 would be there, minus 4.5 volts. So 4 volts and minus 4.5 volts, which is somewhat different to what should be there. Um, so the next question really is why? So I think I need to measure so minus 15, uh, so there's a plus 15 volt supply here feeding this transistor which is interesting because that 15 volt supply might be coming from up here it doesn't actually say where it comes from um, but if that's faulty, then it may agree, it may stop these passing. Um, if I measure across these capacitors, so C6 and C7, if I've got, I can then at least check to see if I've got the main rail coming in to feed these transistors. Um, so we'll go from there. We'll just check those first in case there's a problem actually with the feed going into the circuit. So I think it's C6. Might be C8. Let's have a look. So it makes sense. Um, there'll be somewhere else. I'm going to open. I have to find them. Where are they? So they're not they're not on a sideboard, they're on a the main board. That's gonna be hard to measure, isn't it? Uh, if I go between it's 47, 48, 49 and 50. So I can find those pins on that board, then I can just measure on the pins on here. Um, so between 47 and 49 or whatever it is. Because I can see pin one is here. So I'll count down and figure out what those two pins are and go from there. Okay, so I've identified pin 49. 45 is actually marked just there halfway down. So that's 47, that's 49. So we shall try those and see if we've got anything there. <whistles> 96 volts. Yeah, that seems fine. Um, so it's definitely power going into the board. So I'm going to have to look into this in a bit more detail. Alright, so I've got uh, TP6 and TP7 here. I'm just shifting again back to where I originally found that first fault. Um, those are the plus and minus 15 volt supplies. So I'm just going to measure nice test points. Reference to pin 85. And we'll see what we get there. Because the plus 15 volt feeds this transistor here, the Q11, which I replaced. Um, in order to turn on Q12, which is supposed to give the minus 30 volts, all right? So, I mean, this is a really simple circuit through here. There really isn't a lot to it. Um, we've got CR11, CR12 here. I don't recognize those symbols, but there's only two legs on those parts. They are diodes, so I'm a bit confused by that. But maybe someone else knows what that is, but if I looked into it, probably I could probably find out, but anyway, so I need to measure TP6 and TP7 to see what's going on there and then from then I can 
reevaluate this circuit to see if it's trying to turn it on or not. If that supply is there, then I know this should be turning on okay. I'm suspecting it's not. I can do some voltage measurement from here. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's just a pass regulator here. And this is voltage control. So it's not really a lot to it. And um, this one here is basically just turning on this one, turning on the negative. And uh, this one here is turning on the positive. So, yeah, it's, it's not that complicated. Um, so two of those transistors have been replaced so actually I should point it out that um, Q9 and Q12 those two big TO220s which are in the middle there which have been replaced by some NTE parts they're not the original parts so maybe the rest of the circuits actually working okay but those aren't the right parts that's entirely possible um, so we shall go from here and do some testing so let's turn it on Where are those test points? Let's find those test points first of all. Where are they? Uh, TB5, TB6, bottom corner, which is there. So TB5 top, TB5 uh, TB6 bottom. Okay, so let's do that. So let's do there. TB5 is nothing. TB6 is 5 volts. Those are wrong. Um, I see. I'm looking at TP6, TP7. Where did TP5 from? Where's TP7? Up the top. Ah, oh, TP5 and 6. So they're 5 volt regulators. So that makes sense, doesn't it? That's okay. It's not 5 and 6. I want this 7 and 8. Yeah, here we go. 7 and 8 up the top. 5 and 6 of this regulator. 7 and 8 is what ones I want, which are right there. That makes a bit more sense. So let's do that again. Minus 1.4 volts. 0.1 volts. There's basically nothing there. So, yeah, okay, so let's have a quick look over these transistors here. So we've got 9.9 so 48 volts on the center pin minus 48 pins of 48 volts on that center pin minus 3 nothing two point three or so sliding slightly so they're getting power to those transistors at least, I know that much so um, so the power is getting to the collector of that transistor and the collector of that transistor so it's getting down to there, as you'd expect because I did measure across the input on the board but what's coming out isn't right at all. Those may be the wrong parts. They were different part numbers, so is uh, there were like one in series, one from one apart from each other. So I think they probably are PMP NPN devices. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to look into that some more. Uh, yeah. There's no feed. Back. I suppose that one there is feedback resistor there into through Q11. So that's acting like a voltage divider, I suppose. Between plus 15 volts and minus 30. With plus 15 being a smaller value resistor. So that one, the 2 to 1 ratio, so, or 3 to 1 ratio, I suppose, 1 third. So that would be making that around with 0 volt reference on there. Which would be being PMP that would turn it on relative to the ground. Uh, maybe that's ground there. So 
ground reference because that is relative to this line which is negative so that makes it a positive through so I should be getting a positive voltage there if that is Q11's basis around zero volts or just below just below zero volts it needs to be just below zero volts to turn it on which will then turn this on so yeah it's, it's not I'm suspecting that it's those parts have been replaced though um, I mean the circuit's pretty simple alright so I've just drawn out a little diagram here of the negative voltage regulator section just here just so I don't draw on this bit in this little confined space um, this made it a bit bigger and a bit easier to interpret so you've got minus the 48 volts going on to Q12 um, collector which is correct um, as far as I can tell we've got the other voltage measurements here so again that's voltage, voltage divider getting minus 0.66 on the base of Q11 which is that part I replaced which was shorted um, 0 volt onto the emitter so it's a 0.66 difference so which means that's probably switching on just fine we've got minus 4.2 volts on the collector which then goes to the base of Q12 um, so we've got minus 4.1 here, minus 3.5 here, so again that's 0.6 volts difference. So that seems like it's actually switching ok, because the voltage difference is about right. However, um, that isn't right. So this voltage here obviously should be about 0.6 volts higher than the required voltage, right? So we're supposed to be getting minus 30 volts here and we're not so um, that should probably be around about minus 30 volts on the base of Q12 we don't have that now where that will come from is through Q12 uh, CR12 sorry so that's minus you know 48 volts or so at this end which should pass through here to drag that down um, and that's not happening so I'm suspecting that CR12 here is the fault which means I've got to figure out what the hell that thing is um, it's probably just a 30 volt zener or something basically but it may have to handle a bit more current but I don't really know I'm gonna to have to look at this and just see what's going on here but it's also got like minus 48 volts or so that side and minus 4.1 that side so um, I think that will be incorrect somehow I have to look up that part so CR12, I do have the parts list here. Uh, CR12 is not on that list. Which one am I looking for? That's the mother PCB, motherboard. CR, no, not on that one. CR12 and CR14's diode silicon NJ fit. Current regulator, 3 milliamp. Um, doesn't say it's voltage though. Uh, that's helpful. But in channel J fit. Yeah, okay. So CR12 and CR14 are both the same. Is that what the other part is there as well? Is that CR14? That's CR11. And there's also a CR15 in there too. I'll have to check on that one. CI11, 2 milliamp, okay. And let's say CI15, this one's 75 volts. So this one is that actually tells us what the voltage is on, on CI15, it should be 75 volts, of course. So that's something, at least I know what that one's supposed to be. Um, but right now, we're not going to be getting that. Which is interesting, actually. If that's ground referenced, how's it going to get 75 volts across it? You won't, it's only going to get 30 odd, 31 or so. So that's interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm thinking CR12 might be stuffed, um, which I believe will be a 30 volt zener or thereabouts. Right, so I moved on to some uh, more in-depth testing so I pulled out the regulator card and what have you done excuse the mess of wires it is rather untidy um, 
is I've hooked this up to my bench power supply here, which I'm running as a um, plus or minus supply. So because I've linked these two channels together, it's, which is linked down here, right? But basically, I've got plus or minus 31 volts coming in, right? Which is barely enough what I'm doing, um, but it's enough. So what I've done is hooked up onto this regulator here, and I'm testing. Um, this power supply section here, which previously I couldn't get anything out of, it's just nothing coming out, all right? Well, it was like three volts or something like that. Now, what I'm basically doing is just testing various parts and just trying to make it come to life. So what I've currently got on there is I've got my little resistance box here, um, and I'm just using that to, to bridge between voltage sources and input sources in order to turn transistors on manually, right? So what I've basically got right now is I've got over here, I hope you can see this, um, on Q10, the the uh, emitter is supposed to have a plus 15 volt supply going to it. It doesn't. So what I'm doing is I've got the negative 48 volts rail here, it's going to negative 31. Ne the plus 48 volt rail here, I've got on plus 31. And this is the zero volt rail here. All right, so I've got all those tied to my power supply. Now, what I've also got is this resistance box tied between either the negative or positive 30 volt rails in order to pull transistors up and down. All right, and going through that to adjust the voltage. So I've got it, currently got it on Q10 um, emitter, that minus 15 volt supply. And I've tuned it to give 15 volts. And what happens now is the microphone gone. I can't even see it. See my bench here somewhere. There it is. It's falling off. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so you can look at the meter here. Now on the output of Q9, if this is all working, it should be around 30 volts, right? So I put it on there. Obviously I've already got it working it's doing 30 volts so that should be injecting that voltage if I change the resistance you see the voltage drops quite quickly all right so um, you know sort of 3.3 to 2.2 K in that region there um, is enough to turn all this circuitry on so that verifies that this top part of the circuit actually works as long as it's getting that plus 15 volt supply okay so it means at least I know that part is working. So I can give that a tick. All right. Well, actually, I'll put a tick with an asterisk so I know it's conditional. Because um, I actually tried doing this first on the negative part of the supply, and I wasn't having any luck. So I thought I'd move on to the positive half instead, um, because the negative half ties into this 15 volt rail here as well as a feed into Q11 on the base um, that's what is supposed to I think regulate it pretty much um, so it's, this is basically powered of 15 volt rail but I've got no 15 volts here and also the 15 volt here is also missing so I think because it is missing from both it can't work um, so I think the full actually comes back to this section here now I know this regulator works um, that's an independent 5 volt regulator. So I think there's an issue in this part. You know, I've got I measured 28 volts on negative 28 on that one. I measured plus 28 volts on that one. Um, those are the two main pass regulators. So they're getting power going to them, but there's nothing coming out. Um, the tricky part is that these also have a 30 volt reference, minus 30 volt reference going to it. All right, so it requires on this part of the circuit to work in order to turn this part on. Now, if I'm looking at this, I'm not sure how important it is in order to get the positive rail. So I think the positive rail has to be there first in order to give the, the 30 volt rails, which then give the um, negative 15 volt rail. That's what it appears to be like. Um, Yeah, it's 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 a it's all sort of crossed over and stuff, and, and just trying to figure out what's going on there. But at least I've confirmed that the positive rail here will work if I have plus fifteen volts going there. All right, so 
like I said, in theory, the negative rail should work if I have a voltage here as well. Um, so that's a PNP, that's a PNP. So if I have a negative, well, either a signal lower than 0.7 volts, then 0 volt there. So this has to have output first before this will turn on. That's kind of how it looks. All right, so this is acting as a voltage divider between plus 15 volt and the minus 30 volt output. So that's got to pull this down to be you know, 0.7 volts less than the zero volt rail. So it should be minus 0.7 or so minimum, maybe more. Um, in order to turn on Q12 by providing a zero volt reference to that, which is a which is interesting. That has to be less than this rail, but it can't be less than that rail. Ah, yes. Sorry, because I'm forgetting about this feed here. So this this one here should be pulling it down low, and this one here should be pulling it up in order to compensate. All right, so that's actually pulling up and that's pulling down. Um, so I should be getting a zero, a low voltage coming from this. Uh, it's a in channel JFET. That's what that actually is. All right, um, but these actually specified as a, as a current. I think that's uh, either three milliamp or two milliamp. These two units here, they're both um, one's one's two milliamp, one's three milliamp. So it's obviously what they're using is setting the current on this pass regulator. Um, I've actually tried bridging across this with my little, uh, resistor bridge to try and lower the voltage um, on here, but so far I haven't had any luck. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I would have thought if I'm lowering that voltage, it should start turning on, but it doesn't really seem to be. I'm getting the mo at most 6.5 volts, no more than that, or minus 6.5 volts. So I'm st a little bit stuck on this part right now. Um, it just doesn't seem quite right. I've already checked the resistors and those sorts of things, and that they'll be fine. But it seems to be that this may not be turning on properly because it doesn't have this plus 15 volt rail here. Right, so I've now uh, switched over to be doing the negative rail again. Now I think I was maybe thinking about something backwards the first time round. So now I'm actually pulling this base of Q11 um, positive right, to, to turn that transistor off because it pulls, um, it fights the current regulator um, JFET. So by pulling it up instead of down, JFET pulls it down, that transistor pulls it up to turn off Q12. So if I now measure Q12, I'll get 30 volts. So that circuit is actually working. The problem is that there's no 15 volt supply going to the base of uh, Q11, which is what I'm basically simulating by changing that base voltage there. I'm basically getting one volt on the base in order to turn that transistor off. It starts turning off at 0 0.65, 0 0.63, something like it starts turning off. So when I'm giving one volt, it's it's off and it actually gets 30 volts out here, so it's passing straight through. So that is actually working. So I can actually tick that bit off, which now brings me back down to this bottom section where that 15 volt supply isn't being generated. So that's the next thing I need to look at. Right, so I've made some progress. Now what I've done is um, so I've verified that all this work, um, all these parts here work. Uh, I could get those voltages out correctly if I injected my own and manually adjusted the transistor biases and stuff, right? So those that section there works as I've ticked off, and I know this one works. So this this with this section here. Now all this relies on having a 15 volt supply. Now this relies on having a 30 volt supply, which has to come from here. So that means the 15 volt supply has to come first, and that comes from this regulator here. So it's got a big pass transistor here, which is a 3055 uh, part. This part here is a regulator, which is an MC1723CG. Now, I um, 
as you saw before I pulled this board out and I, and I mainly injected my own signals and stuff like that well on voltages and I did the same thing to this regulator here and I did the, the, across this, directly across this power rails which is across this capacitor here this uh, tantalum cap I'll put it directly across there which directly powers that chip by itself excluding everything else and nothing came out there was no voltage coming out this regulator chip is blown so what I did um, because it's supposed to be a 15 volt rail is I got a LM7815 which is a 15 volt positive regulator um, of course there's an MPN by, uh, pass, uh, pass transistor there it means it needs a positive signal or positive voltage going to control it so I've got a 7815 and I've tacked that across the original voltage regulator across its supply and to the pass transistor so it's bypassing this regulator okay um, this is a test it's not permanent it's just to test it so I've tacked it across and I'll show you what the result is. So there's the common ground rail. If I measure on the 30 volt rails first, which is just here somewhere, see? There's one of them. I'll get it on there. Alright, so that's the minus 38, that's the minus 30 rail, so it's giving 28 volts right now. This is the plus. 30 rail giving 28 volts or 20, 29 nearly. Um, then we've got the plus and minus 15 volt rails up here. 14 volts because I'm using this regulator, so it's not the same. And minus 15 volts. Alright, so those power supplies are now all working. So that just confirms the theory that uh, the issue is the regulator there is blown so by replacing that you know with a substitute the circuit fires up I'm probably at a point now where I could actually put this into the unit and power it up and try it but I'm not going to do that I want to replace this part properly so um, I'm gonna have to try and find one um, yeah we'll see how we go with that but at least I've identified what's wrong that regulator there's gone if I can't find another part I can probably substitute something easy enough like a uh, LM317 for example, a you know adjustable voltage regulator. It just has to be high precision I think because that's an, part of an adjustable circuit so if I do a close up on this you'll see there's actually a adjuster just there. Oh, so there's a regulator there and there's the adjuster. So that's for trimming the 15 volt supply. Right, so I think that's used as like a reference for things. So no, obviously that has to be accurate otherwise I wouldn't bother putting a trim in there because we've got another supply over here which uses exactly the same part just here and that's a 5 volt supply but there's no trimmer on this one it's a fixed value resistor so it just doesn't care so obviously you know 15 volt rail I want to get that an accurate supply so I have to do the same I mean yeah this is enough I can always use an adjustable regulator and just tack it across much like I have here right so that's entirely possible if I cannot get that part um, but I'd rather replace it with a proper part if I can that might take a while to get one though. So. Okay, so I put the power supply uh, module back in again. I've actually done a bit of a uh, hack. So I did that 7815 as the voltage regulator there for the reference for the main pass transistor. Um, but that's only like 14 volts. I was getting at 14.1 or something like that. So what I've done is I'll put a serious diode on the common leg of the regulator. What it does is increases it by that diode voltage. So wherever the diode voltage is, it increases it by that. So this one's about 0.7 volts. Um, so I'm now getting 14.8 out of it. So um, that helps quite a bit. Now I haven't powered up yet. I've, I've slid it all back into place. It's hooked up. I'm going to video the first power up. So I've got no idea what is going to happen. So let's just check some settings first. Make sure things are on the lowest settings. Um, 100 hertz here, whatever. Vernier is centered, voltage error off. Those are links are set up correctly. Internal sensing, phase lock on off. Well, I don't know, I'm doing that. Control local mode. That's a operation switch. So let's power it up. Wait for the bang. Well, we have an indicator lights. The LEDs a little bit dim. Oh, 
Must be a better connection to see. See that floating around? That's a bit better. So there's no bang. So this is apparently doing 10 hertz at 0.1 volts. Okay, let's do a measurement. Let's see if we've got any output. Let's just shove those in there. And I am seeing nothing. I think it's got a delay, eh? it's got a, um, yeah, a break. So that should be running now. Um, but I'm not seeing anything. Oh, of course I'm on DC, I'm on AC volts. That might help. AC volts. Oh, I'm getting something then. Yeah. Let's go to, um, let's go one volt. No, there's nothing there, so there's no output. So it's still got further issues. Um, I should I'm doing this all correctly anyway. 10 hertz, let's do 50 hertz output. Changing ranges. It's doing something. It's just no output. 10 volts. 100 volts, 1000 volts. Just flicking around a bit there. So, yeah, there's no output, so I have to look into that part of it. But you can actually hear it doing things, so it is actually kind of functioning. Yeah, put it back on again. Oh, no, no, it's dropped off again. So, it is doing something. Right, so um, the overload light I'm going to have to investigate because that, that's lit up now. Um, when I first turn it on, so it's, it's on. Even once it's, it's done that 30 second delay where it starts up, and then you can turn it off to operate mode, it still stays on. Um, voltages, I just checked them and they are all, well, at least the ones I've checked, were still looking okay. Um, the series pass regulator just here is warming up, but it's not excessive. So there's obviously power coming out of that, but voltages look fine. Um, what I have noticed though is on this one here, uh, this section which I couldn't test before because it's got this feedback from the unit, uh, although there were voltages there, um, which said it's probably okay, but I've done retests on these voltages in here and on the 20 volt rail and the plus 15 volt where I'm getting around 24 volts and on the minus 15 volt where I'm getting minus 24 volts so these voltages in this section are wrong now I don't know if that's because of the overload being on or whether the overload is on because of this um, I need to dig into the manual and figure out what this does but um, it's obviously like an op amp balanced circuit so this does the leveling so it's got the sensing so adjust the voltages in order to match the sensing so I don't know what's going on there um, that is going to require some investigation I mean it's putting power out the voltages are there which is something which means you know these pass regulators are at least working um, Q6 is that one there which I replaced with a substitute because it was blown I've ordered some more parts but they're going to take probably a month to arrive so I don't know if it's going to be okay or not but whether it's related to Q6 being changed, I don't know. It's not the right part, but it's not doing anything particularly special. Um, it's just taking the op amp output and using that to drive the biasing on the base of that pass transistor. So, yeah, I don't know. The, vo the voltages are there, and it's, so it's being pulled down a little bit. Um, well, I haven't actually checked the input voltages here to see what they are, but. Uh, I'm getting sort of 24 volts across all, all of them, so something is not right in here. Right, so uh, this is part of the circuit diagram for the unit. Um, this is back to the power supply section, which I already looked at. And now, I, in this section here, I was actually getting some weird voltages and stuff. So I was getting sort of 23 volts or so, 24 volts maybe. And it's supposed to be 15 volt output here, or plus 15, minus 15 over here, and plus 20 over here but none of those were making sense. Now, I was suspicious of it at the time, but because it had this 
referencing here and the error sig control coming in. I thought, well, maybe it's not getting an error signal, and so therefore it's just open circuit, and so it's just randomly putting out whatever. But when I installed it back into the unit, I was still getting those weird voltages, so I know that there's an issue. Either the control signal coming in is wrong, or this op amp here isn't working. Now, um, what I've done is I've hooked up on my bench, and you'll see a bit of video in a second, you know, the next section, and that will be um, showing me injecting voltages into here to see what's going on. So I've got this, this is a link here between the plus 15 volts and the reference power supply on the motherboard side, on the, on the back plane. So I've put a link on this board of this wire between TP10 and um, the junction here of R14 and R13 to give that uh, reference supply input, which is obviously what this is using to determine what's going on. So what I've also done is I wired on a potentiometer onto this connection here, which I think is pin 3. The, the pinout seems a bit weird actually, I can't make sense of it, but um, it looks odd. But anyway, um, between there and the positive and, and negative rails, um, these connections here basically. So that's positive rail, that's negative rail. And um, so I can vary the input on that input pin there, which is like the area control signal effectively being supplied by this pot. So I can vary between plus and minus rail voltages. And by doing that, I should be able to change the ref the relative voltage between those two, which should change the output of the op amp to turn this transistor on and off. That's the theory. So we'll go and have a look and see what happens. Right, so I'm set up here. Now, uh, I've got various bits of, it's a mess here, wires everywhere, but here's the potentiometer, which I've got set up to provide the input for the error control signal to the op amp, which is right here. That's the op amp there. And that is the um, Q6 transistor there. And that's the Q17 transistor here. Um, so that's one there provides the 20 volt output. This one here provides the plus 15 volt output. This one here does the um, that's Q8, which does the minus 15 volt output. Um, so I've got the plus and minus supplies. I've got them set at 23 volts, plus and minus 23 volts. Um, and my negative lead, the multimeter, is hooked up to the zero volt reference of those joint supplies. And which is also TP9, that's that same zero volt rail. So TP10 should be plus 15 volts, 21.6, right? TP11 should be minus 15 volts, and TP12 should be plus 20 volts, right? Then all they're all wrong. And this is with that link on the back, um, linking between the um, reference power supply input and the plus 15 volt. Um, well, outputs they are both are so it's linked. They've got that link on the back there to do that link. Um, so yeah, that is wrong. So what I do here's the part which is on that input. So if I just um, stick this on, so that rail there plus rail, if I change this part around, you'll see nothing happens. So okay, maybe that transistor's gone, but that's one I've already replaced because I found it was faulty. Um, now the input for the transistor comes from the, the op amp, and the output from the op amp is right there on that pin there. So there's the output from the op amp, and if I change the pot around, nothing's changing. So the op amp signal isn't changing. All right, so this is a data sheet for the LM301A. Um, that's the actual device there. Now I figured out why the pinout was didn't make sense because it's got a tab on the side, which I was assuming was pin one. But on these, it actually marks pin 8. Now it makes sense. So, um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. So there's the op-amp construction here. 2, 3 input, 6 output. And the interesting thing about this device is that, according to the specs, it's actually being used outside of its tolerance. So if I go all the way up to the top of the page, and you can't find the specs here. So LM301A is a plus and minus 18 volt supply. Um... Which is interesting because it's running. It has to be on a on a greater than a twenty volt supply because it's got a twenty volt output. Um, so it must be the supply voltage must be greater than twenty volts. So I actually thinking maybe I should get one of these because you've got a, a wider supply range here. 
Um, these may be better. They seem to have higher specs, actually. The specs that do look better. Just glancing through these. Um, which package would it be? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so I might actually look at uh, these devices here, the, the 101 and the 201, because they they say plus or minus 22 volts. So maybe that's why this you know this has failed, is because it's running outside of its spec. I mean, plus or minus 18, yeah, okay, but it's got a 20 volt supply rail there. Um, so, well, greater than 24 volts, it's 20, I think it's about 26 volts or something like that. It was actually going on the input, so that's way outside of its range. Um, yeah, so, hmm, unless that is what's acceptable, I don't know. Maybe I'm interpreting this incorrectly, but to me it looks like it's probably pushing it much. So I might actually look at getting one of these devices instead.